In this episode, I'm talking to Carrie Green from the Female Entrepreneur Association about how to tap into the invisible to grow your audience. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Brandon Lucero, and you're about to experience the new way to thrive in business, entrepreneurship, and life by leaning into who you are, what you love, and standing up for what you want to create. Get ready because this is where we go against the grain, say no to outdated society norms, and we say yes to change in order to create a happier, more fulfilled world. Welcome to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Today, uh, we have a very special guest. Um, the person that we're interviewing today is actually one of my I don't know if she knows this, but she is one of my favorite people um, in the world that I get to talk to business, uh, woo woo stuff, spirituality, everything. She, uh, We've worked together in the past. We've done a lot of really cool work together. And um, she is the mastermind behind the Female Entrepreneur Association. Uh, so today we have Carrie Green with us. And Carrie Green's a best selling author, author of the book. Um, uh, she means business, and you just started a magazine, which I am so fortunate and so grateful to be a guest on. Which, by the way, uh, Carrie, I was telling my wife how funny it was that my very first magazine cover is on a magazine called She Means Business. Uh, <laughs> so, but I'm honored and I'm so grateful, and I'm grateful to have you on the podcast. So, welcome. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. Such a nice intro. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, it should be fun. Um, I'm I just have to start. Well, let's start here. For everyone who doesn't know who you are, which I would assume everyone probably does, but for those that don't, can you just tell a little bit about what the Female Entrepreneur Association is and who you are? Yep. So the Female Entrepreneur Association is a little idea I had in 2011. And it's basically I see it as an online platform to inspire and empower women to turn their ideas and dreams into successful businesses. Um, so it's just really about, you know, bringing us all together, inspiring everyone to just really realize what is possible. So yeah, that's at the heart and soul of it all. Amazing. That's awesome. And is it mainly like online businesses or you help people in all sorts of different businesses? To be fair, it's actually really broad. Like we have people from perfume makers to fashion designers, but mostly I would say it is online businesses. And we're definitely more geared towards supporting um, online businesses, even though it could be a physical product because we have a physical product range, but it's more about like creating an online presence and selling online and leveraging the internet to grow your business. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. It was, um, I, I, you know, when we first started working together, my business was kind of in like a transition. So we just started, uh, the video Forex kind of like methodology and, and philosophy. And I remember posting about like working with you or something, or we did, we took like a, I don't know, like a selfie or Instagram picture or something like that. And then my family photographer who lives like a couple miles down away, down from us was just like, Oh my God, I follow Carrie and I love her. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Cause you're in the UK and what you've built with the female entrepreneur association is so impressive and that the reach goes all the way across the world. And then we were working. So uh, for those of you who don't know, Carrie was one of our very first clients on uh, in the agency that we have now. And we were working on your stuff one time out of like a wine bar and some person came up to us and was like, Oh, I love Carrie. You know, like you guys are watching her videos. I follow her all the time. And then it's it just nuts. And the team, the team looks at me and just goes, okay, is Carrie, is she like a celebrity? Is she, how, like, how are people recognizing Carrie just from our computer screens? Um, so my question to you is, is when you started the Female Entrepreneur Association, was this something you've ever dreamed of, like having this amount of reach? I've, well, my goal was to build the largest platform for female entrepreneurs. So I was thinking big. I was thinking big numbers. I wanted it to be the best and the largest. So, but I didn't really think about it in terms of people recognizing who I was. Right. Like that's not what I was thinking. I was just thinking, I want to help as many people as possible. Yeah. So and that's, that's what, kind of and that's what I love about you the most is the humbleness. Um, I remember like the first time we were filming together and I, I remember, I think it was asking you about your, your book, um, she means business. And there was a couple things that you said, um, number one, 
you said, you told me, it's like, I asked if you had a ghostwriter or someone helping you with it. And you said, no. And the reason why is because I want my energy, my passion. I want me in this book and I don't want anyone to like interrupt that or have any part of it. Like I want it to be my energy behind it. And you told me something along the lines of one of the philosophies that you had when you wrote the book is that you wrote it for everyone because it doesn't matter who you are, what you've accomplished. Every single person on this planet is equal on all levels. And that's who you wrote the book for. Um, so with, with that kind of in mind, I, my question to that is when you say, I want the energy to be mine, what do you mean when you say that? I, I mean, I feel like obviously when we, I mean, everything is an energy frequency, isn't it? Our thoughts are energy frequencies. Are everything we create, it has an energy to it. And for me, I just really, truly believe that when you experience, when you have an experience with a, a person or a product or a book or a video, whatever it is, the energy of the person creating it definitely comes through and it has a feeling to it. And so for me, that has always been really important with everything that I've created through FEA. I've always been really intentional about how I want to show up, what the feelings are that I really want to put throughout my work and what I'm creating. And I think like with the book, especially, I just, I just knew that I had to channel my energy into it so that when someone picked that book up and read it, they felt so connected with me and they felt like I was their best friend and they, I don't know, there was just that, I wanted them to feel inspired. I wanted them to feel empowered. And I, I wanted to use my energy and put that into the book so that they felt that on the other side. And I know it's a bit kind of maybe a bit woo woo, but that's I just think that's so unbelievably powerful. And in my experience, when it's me showing up and it's my energy going into it, I can the impact that it has seems to be so different than when I've delegated. In fact, that's one of the been my, one of my biggest struggles is actually delegating in certain roles because I find that if I delegate things where it's supposed to be my voice and me, yeah. it doesn't quite work. Yeah. Um, which is a bit challenging. But um but yeah, I just I just really think it just from all the feedback I've ever got and just from my experience with other brands, other companies, other people in business, like you can tell, like, right. You can feel it. It's like kind of like what we call the yeah. invisible, you know, and people, yeah. it's, people go like, Oh, I don't, energy is not a thing. And it's just, it's all woo woo. It's all made up. But it's like, if two people are arguing and you walk into a room, you literally can feel it. And that's yeah. what the energy is. And so it makes sense to put the energy into the book. I have a, a just a question out of curiosity of your belief on this is that you wrote, the book. What year did you write the book? Do you remember? I wrote it. I finished writing it in 2016. Okay. So do you think the energy, like if someone reads the book, are they experiencing the energy of Carrie from 2016 when you're writing it or Carrie now? Like, How does that work? Do you think? I don't, well, I feel like they are experiencing the essence of my energy, like the essence of me. So for example, like I want to be really intentional about the way the relationship I build and the energy I'm putting out to create that relationship. So for example, I know I want to feel and come across like someone's best friend. I don't want to be the expert, the guru, the the teacher. I mean, yes, I am the teacher, but I'm the I'm the best friend. I'm right there by your side in the trenches with you. And I want this to be real, a real connection, a real friendship because when you have a friendship with someone, it's it's such a powerful thing. It's, it's like intimate and it's you, you've the, you have that trust. Right. And also for me, other key things are like inspiring and empowering. And those are, are an energy as well. And so I was really intentional that those would, that's how I wanted to make people feel. So I think when people read the book now, while it's definitely connected to Carrie from 2016, the experience that I, the experiences I'd had back then, the, I think people still get that essence that I still like strive for to put out today, that the essence of me, the essence of FEA and that lovely, warm, friendly feeling. And so I think, yeah, that energy exists as much 
um, back then as it does now. hundred percent. I agree. I was just more curious of your, your thoughts on that. Cause I'm just like, I don't know. Is it the, is it the same? Is it different? Does it, does the energy in that book evolve? So you're writing book number two now. And so there was Carrie 2016. Now there's Carrie 2020 or 2021 when you, you write the next book, you're writing a next book, right? I have that correct. Yeah. Well, I'm supposed to be, but. <laughs> All right. We'll just say 2021 or whenever it is. Um, are you, what kind of, what's the difference in energy that they're going to experience in the book now? Like what's the difference between Carrie 2016 and Carrie 2021 or whenever, whenever it gets written? Um, well, to be fair, I think the next book will probably be more about, um, the, what we're talking about actually are energy and how we show up and getting out of our own way and like how we can, the different tools we can use to, to really help us to create success so much faster. And I think it's all because the, honestly, the past couple of years for me have been, have been probably some of my most challenging years in business. After my book came out in 2017, everything was going so amazingly well. Visibility was high. Engagement was high. The business was thriving. And then I definitely reached an upper limit. And I, I had this thought, I remember it distinctively. It was what got me here won't get me there. And I felt like to break through to the next level, I had to change how I was doing things. And that meant changing up the team and developing. And, and obviously you do need to do that. You do definitely get to a point in business where you have to make changes and so in this whole process of like looking at operations and team stuff, I felt I ended up feeling so disconnected from the business and so disconnected from myself and things just kind of felt like it was, it felt like it was a runaway train. And I honestly felt like I was definitely not like unhappy every day, but now on the other side of that, I can see what, how disconnected and out of alignment I was with my own energy. And yeah. so doing going back to basics with so much stuff and getting reconnected with a feeling good and feeling abundant and going where it flows rather than resisting. Cause like over the past two years, like the phrases I kept saying over and over again were, I feel like I'm pushing water up a hill. I feel stuck mm -hmm. in the mud. It's like I'm in quicksand. Um, I am trying to get blood out of a stone. Honestly, I'd repeat these phrases to people in conversations all the time. And I was so caught up in feeling stuck and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing to try and figure it out. And I thought if I keep pushing this, I'll, I will have a breakthrough. I'll figure it out. But it, it, it's, it was only when I realized, you know, I have to surrender. I have to let go and I have to get back on a pl to a place where I feel good and I'm making decisions from a feel good place. And it was only in that tra the transition which I knew all along, but was just stuck in my own way right. that I was able to come out of the other side. And so I definitely think the next book will be more on that because I experienced that before I started FEA. I experienced that, you know, at a really successful point within FEA. And I just think we are, you know, every time we try and break through to that next level, we, we can so easily mess it up and get in our own way. Yeah. And I just think for me, mindset and our attitude and our energy and how we look at things and how we approach things and how we align with things has such a huge impact on whether we can flow with ease and feel good and create so much success and abundance or whether we just kind of like literally block everything and stop ourselves. And so, yeah. So that's definitely if I, am I like, if I'm understanding it correctly, you kind of like you had all this success and it came kind of like, it was in 2017, it was from the book. And did you actually hit a plateau there? Or am I understanding it correctly where you kept hearing the phrase, what got you here won't get you there. So you thought you had the change. And by making that change, you ended up causing a lot of discomfort. Is, is that what I'm, is that correct? I think I think what happened was I had we'd created so much success and it was like, I'm ready for the next level. I'm ready to scale this. I want to scale it. I mean, it was already scale. It was already a multiple seven figure business, but I was like, I'm ready to scale it and take it to another level. And I felt like to scale it, I needed different people. I needed full-time people. I needed to structure the team better. And it's probably, uh, probably true, but, um, yeah. But yeah, I just, 
I, and you get caught up, you get caught up in thinking things, I don't know how things need to be. And I would speak to people and get different advice. And, um, and I, and then I was listening to what other people were telling me rather than following what felt good for myself. Yeah. Um, and then in the, in the mix, I was pregnant and I had a baby. <laughs> Yeah, it's just and that, then that, that small that thing. as well. <laughs> so, so yeah, but um, yeah, it was. It, I remember I wrote in my journal. I found it. Um, it was funny actually. I found it like a year or so, or maybe I think maybe eighteen months. I found it the day I wrote in my journal practically the exact same thing, um, and it was. I felt overwhelmed. I feel like I need space and I put space inside of a box. And then in my journal itself, I wrote how funny that I should put the word space inside of a box. And it was like how I felt, I felt trapped. I felt so like the walls were closing in around me. And, um, and then I think when you get to a certain level of, of success as well, like I mean, depending on what your gremlins are like for me it was like can I sustain this can I actually keep this going and I started to feel like I was spinning plates and I felt like they could crash down on me at any given moment even though that wasn't true that's what I started to tell myself and it's insane how you know I love mindset stuff but I really was getting in my own way and it's it is well you can't see it sometimes you're so in your own stuff you just you just can't see it yeah and you know what's really interesting is is from my experience, there's like different phases to building a business. And it sounds like the phase that you're at for me, I, we went through the same thing right when we hit, I think right, probably around a, a million in revenue where I was basically so much in the business and micromanaging and trying to like control a lot of the things inside of the business where we, you literally are, like you said, splitting, uh, spinning the plates. And I, I had to go through that kind of like that growth period as well to kind of like get to, uh, to get out of that spot, uh, for you, can I ask what revenue level you were at when you got to that spot? What, when I started to feel like, yeah. When you felt like things, you got that level of success, you felt like you're spinning all the plates and everything was going to come crashing down. It must, it must've been, we must've been at like 2 million a year or something. 2 million. Okay. Yeah. So uh, basically I think what I'm trying to get at is, is when you get to that point, it's kind of like you're building the business, but then you forget about what you're actually passionate about. So like, I feel like people see, see growth because they're in alignment of where they're supposed to be. Like you writing the book, you creating the content, you having the vision. But then as the business grows, the, the things that have to happen inside the business also grow. So like, systems. Now we have customer support. Now we have this, now we have retention. Now we have all this stuff. And you're like trying to build these things out that you completely lose the thing that that was the, like the catalyst of growing the business in the first place. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. And I got so lost from it. Yeah. Yeah. And the same thing with me. So we had, and this is recent, like I I know you and I've chatted outside the podcast on this, but for me, this app, like the switch maybe was six months ago. Right, completely realigned back to where I am, and we've been seeing that that growth again. So, for you, um, what have you done, or what are you putting in place, or what are you doing now to kind of like get out of that spot? What's what's the well, plan? Well, I've reached this. You know, I don't know if you know. I mean, you probably do. You know, Jim Rohn, yeah, that, yeah. that old personal development yeah. guru. So, um, he always talks about like having a day of disgust where basically you feel so disgusted by your, yourself and the situation <laughs> that you're in, you finally snap and you're like, I have to do something about this. Yeah. And for me, I got so fed up, so fed up of hearing myself and feeling, feeling the way I did about everything and feeling so drained all the time. And I knew I needed to do something. So one of the the first thing I did was actually get some readings with like multiple different people. Why not start there? Just because when you say readings, you mean like psychic readings? Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like where people would do cards for me and they would just, it would just make me feel better and make me feel like I can trust that things are going to work out. And it was funny because both of the people, Sorry, I want I wanted to ask a question, but keep going, keep going. <laughs> well, both of the people of, that I had readings with both said the same thing, and they were these completely disconnected people, and they both said you have to go back to basics. Mm. And I would be, I'd been hearing this message, and also 
I'd been hearing every time I watched something or spoke to someone, it was like meditation was popping up all the time, meditate, meditate. And I was just ignoring it. Yeah. And I, cause because I was ignoring it because I was in such a state, my energy was on such a weird level that I f- did not give myself permission to do the things that I knew I needed to do. And Kellen, my husband, we obviously talk about all this stuff. And he was like, Carrie, you've lost connection with doing all the mindset stuff that you always used to do. You're not doing it anymore. I was like, I don't have time to do it anymore. And it felt like the day was always running away with itself. And I never gave myself permission to create that space to do those things. So I, I'd had those readings. And I don't know if you wanted to yeah, yeah. What I just, I wanted to know what they said. I wanted to know. <laughs> I wanted to be nosy and, and ask what they were, what they told. It you. was about doing that, and I think the other thing was that I had really lost my voice in the mm-hmm. sense of I wasn't speaking up about the way I truly felt, and probably one of the biggest things this relates to is like team. I felt afraid to hurt people's feelings. I yeah. felt afraid to let people go when I knew they weren't the right people, but I just felt so responsible for what I had done. And I felt responsible for them not working out that I didn't have the guts to say, this isn't working. Um, I felt like on so many levels of my life, I wasn't actually speaking up for what I truly believed deep down. And it was like, every time I made a decision, which went out was, which was against what I truly believed. It was like, I was chipping a bit away a bit of myself. And um, so that in the readings, they were like, you kind of need to step up, you need to speak up, you need to, um, you know, go back to basics and strip this all back and rebuild stuff. Right. So that's kind of what the message was. And it's what I really knew deep down, but you know, sometimes you just want someone to tell you. Yeah. A hundred percent. Well, it's hard to like trust that inner voice sometimes. I mean, yeah. You know, that's what it's, what's the right, right thing to do. Especially and, when you're so disconnected with yourself. Right. And so, you know, I work with uh shaman. So Jim, Jim's brother-in-law. And one of the things he talks about all the time is regaining is like your personal power and regaining your person. You have to, you have to have your personal power and you cannot let that escape. And I went through the same thing. Thing. Like we've had people on the team um, who were not a right fit and needed to go. And it took me a long time to do that. And it's like, they're, you know, it's, it's a human being. You don't want to hurt their feelings. You don't want to put them in a worse spot. You don't want to do any of that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's a lot more beneficial for a lot more people to make sure your team's in place. You're doing the right thing. And that's like, well, that's why we created this podcast. You know, like we had sold the video for such a long time, but like my message and what I wanted to talk about deep down, it needed to evolve. And that's what we're doing now with this podcast. And so it's really exciting to see you do that and step back into the personal, you like regaining that personal power. How do you feel now? Like, oh my gosh, I can't even tell you. Like a few weeks ago, maybe it was a month ago or so now, I had this weird vision that just came to me one day. I was sat here and it felt like I was riding a bike and the wind was blowing in my hair and I felt free. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I was like, I've not had this feeling in such a long time. And I just felt so good and so excited. And I felt like so much more abundance and that I I just felt like, yeah, I removed the blocks and it was like, I could just go for it again. And, um, and then funnily, like, so after I had the readings, I ended up deciding to do a challenge for myself. Mm -hmm. I love little challenges for myself. And it was really like meditate every day, visualize every day, um, watch something every day that's going to inspire and empower you. And then on the other side of it was like, a like, um, showing up because I hadn't been showing up because I've been so in the back end of the business. I hadn't right. been showing up for why I'd even started FEA for the whole vision and voice of FEA for the, for my audience, for my community, I hadn't been showing up for them. So I committed to showing up. And so I began doing, just getting more present. And, um, I started to create more authentic videos because I I literally would just sit here and film whenever I had an idea. And I hadn't done that in such a long time because what I'd been creating was so prepared and it was so planned out. And I remember we had these two days of filming planned where we were going to film all like a whole quarter's worth of content. And it got to the filming day and I don't know what it was, but I physically couldn't do it. Like I just felt every part of me was like, you cannot film this. You can't do this. You can't create this content. And, um, and so I didn't, and then I didn't have anything. And I was like, well, I'm just going to figure it out. And then as this challenge started to happen for myself and everything started to, I started to change. I just started to 
make a video and I literally would open QuickTime on my computer, start filming a movie and just talk to the camera. And it felt so good to be back. And I was yeah. like, I am back. I'm just here. I'm just doing what I always used to do, but I've forgotten I used to do this yeah. and, um, and little things. And then I actually then made all the team changes yeah. and I got, and I had to, you know, I had the courage then to, make the decisions that had, had been hovering over me for such a long time. Is, when you and, say team changes, does that mean you kind of like got rid of the people you knew were supposed to be not be there? And Yeah, some were actually just internal shifts and changes with the team. Some were people actually leaving the team and in really hard conversations and like the guilt, like I felt so bad after the conversations, like so much guilt. Yeah. But then as the days progressed after that, I knew I'd made the right decision and it was not only right for me, but it was also right for them. Right. And, um, and yeah, so I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like, so, so much has transformed and changed. And, and, and it's funny though, because then so many inspired ideas have been coming. So many amazing opportunities have started to arise. And I'm like, oh, it feels like I'm back in the flow and yeah. this is how it used to be. And I'd forgotten what it was like when you're in this space where things are flowing and it's like you get these downloads and it's like this incredible idea and stuff just starts to work with more ease. And like I said, these opportunities arise and you get connected with people that just happen to be the perfect people right. for you to chat to at that moment that are going to guide you. And I, I was like, I had just become so disconnected Yeah, and it's I like, just think it's powerful when you get in that place. hundred percent. It's kind of like, Oh, hello alignment. My good friend. Nice to see you yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and, the, and that I, I mean, I agree a hundred percent and people always ask me like, how do you get into alignment? I literally like, I think it's very simple. Just do what you want to do do what yeah. lights you up. And if something doesn't light you up, either get rid of it or find someone else to do it. And yeah. that's when you start to f figure out, uh, what you need to do, what feels good. You get these downloads and everything just kind of floats. Um, yeah. and when you, when you say downloads, I think I understand what you mean, but what do you like to you? What is a download and how do you get more downloads? We'll go a little woo woo here. So it'll be, let me try and think of a specific example. Um, the other week I had something I needed to figure out and I, I can't remember what the exact thing was actually, but I needed to figure something out. And I, instead of like trying to figure out and pushing, I literally just kind of put the intention out there that the perfect idea is going to come to me. Mm -hmm. And I, when I would me meditate every day and when I would meditate, I would just <laughs> sometimes actually turn to visualization where I'd imagine this like white light coming down through me and just allowing myself to receive inspiration and whatever I needed to hear or know. And I'd, I, sometimes I'd be sat doing my meditation or sometimes I would be, you know, drifting off to sleep at night, whenever it was. And all of a sudden, like the idea would hit me and I'd be like, that's it. Like that's what I was looking for. And, and you just feel in with every cell of your being, like that is the inspired idea. Yeah. So it's just that it's, I think it's allowing yourself to, instead of pushing, you're just surrendering and op opening up and trusting that you're going to receive the right ideas and the, in like in the right, at the right time and just completely letting go. And, and, and what do you, what like, is. where do you think the downloads come from? Uh, I don't know. I feel like I, the word I probably use most is like just the universe. I don't know, yeah. somewhere out there, like this energy that, um, I don't know, I guess people call it so many different things, right? but I definitely feel like for me, it's just this higher power and I, in my, I just call it the universe. I, I mean, I agree. I, I don't know where it comes from either, but this is what I tell people all the time is you have to like the answers come in the silence. And this is something that, um, Jim's the, the shaman I work with talks about all the time too, is like the answers come in the, in the silence, the ancient ones come talk to you in the silence. And I feel like it's all around us all the time, but people let like fear or worry or they let like this desire need to have to have it now, I have to have the answers now. And the thinking process, I got to figure it out. Thinking, thinking, thinking cloud. I almost view it as like a cloud walking, like forming over your head. That's blocking this, like you said, a white light coming down. Like it's like blocking 
access to this thing that you have access to all the time. And so a lot of the times you'll hear like you'll be in the shower and you're just not really focusing on anything. Then boom, all of a sudden like hits. It's because the mind is silent and you're allowing the download to come in. And when we started the video 4X, like I think I talk about this in almost every episode, but at the end of 2017, we had just done $500,000 in revenue that year. I hated what we we're doing. I got rid of everything we were selling. And I, um, for three months, didn't know what to do. And I was walking around the backyard. And then all of a sudden, like I was in my office, just sitting here. Uh, this might be too much information, but I was actually sitting on the toilet and like, it's just like, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. It like went off like fireworks, but I wasn't thinking anything. And it went off like fireworks. And then I just wrote the entire thing out. And then that was, led us down the path that we're on today. But it literally was a download, like what you're talking about. And so I think it's such a vital I guess, tool or thing to be aware of for a lot of entrepreneurs when you're not feeling in alignment to sometimes just getting silent or meditating is, could be the best thing. And to trust the things that are these downloads that get plugged in into your head. Um, I, go ahead. I just, I just, on one last thing on that is I just think it's so important because I don't get me wrong. I love strategy and I, I love visibility and I love all that stuff. Don't, but I think without being in alignment, it is so hard to actually have those breakthroughs and to create the success you want. Um, I think it's about taking inspired action, not because someone says you need to do this, you need to do that. Like it, you, it, like what you were saying, it has to feel good. Yeah. And I just think that's why mindset and tuning in with yourself is probably the thing we should work on the most. Um, but we, it's the thing we give ourselves permission to do the least yeah. because we don't put it up there as a priority because I need to get going. I need to get do, doing this stuff. I have to do, do, do where what you said, like create the space and the ideas will flow. And yeah, I, just, well, I think a lot of people think it's supposed to be a certain way. Like I have to have a strategy. I have to be doing this. I have to be working hard. And so it can be a little counterintuitive. And like, I just boil it down to something very simple. If you don't like it, don't do it or figure out a plan to get yourself out of it. And it's not going to be an easy switch. Like, you know, one thing with us was, was, um, the agency inside the company, it was like, it was a lot of work and it was something that, you know, I had a really hard time with for, I don't know, a year, year and a half. And then we finally had Matt come in and he, you know, he runs it and it's, it's going really well. But I think that so many new entrepreneurs, like there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of people to follow. There's a lot of vice to take uh, that you can take, but there's so much of just like this, this things they get indoctrinated to into, or these like preconceived notions of it's supposed to be this certain way. I have to do this, even though it feels you, I mean, you know, you know, when you're like trying to do something and you're going against the grain. And so I think so many people just keep going against the grain when all you have to do is just stop get silent, sometimes not doing anything will actually allow you to grow a lot faster. I, I have a, um, a student, his name's Tim Adams. He has this concept called the dip factor, which is like sometimes when you make those shifts and you like stop going against the grain, things will actually get worse. So like it'll go down and then people go, oh no, that was the wrong decision. When in fact you're going to go down, but then you're going to start going up like 10 times faster. And he says, most people will never actually make it through the dip. So they go back to going against the grain and then just get caught in like this cycle. But if you can stop it, get silent, meditate, get back in alignment, yes, things might get worse, but if you can write out that dip, you're going to see exponential growth on yeah. the other side. And it's so true. If it, most people just don't, don't realize that. Um, so speaking of like downloads, woo woo, all of that stuff, when did you get into all this and how has it really impacted your business. Cause if you have a feeling your entire business is run off of quote unquote, like we like mine is like a lot of my decisions yeah. are based off of, I guess, non-traditional business things a lot of times. So what does your like childhood look like? I mean, I, I, cause I know your backstory and I know your dad kind of introduced to this to you guys, but has this been like a lifelong thing for you? Yeah. So I feel, well, I feel really grateful because my dad was into personal development, which in the UK in particular, it's really uncommon, especially back then. But he was really into it and loved Jim Rohn. I remember getting the video, he got the videotapes out and made us watch Jim Rohn. I was like, dad, who is this guy with white hair? Why are you making us watch him? Um, but he, well, like I remember being like nine or 10 and him sending us, uh, me and my sister and brothers on this course to learn about the power of the mind. And we learned about 
the like being positive and putting ourselves in bell jars to protect our energy. And we learned about visualization. Wait, in, was in, this, in bell jars? Yeah, it was What's like that? it's like where you it's where you imagine there's like an energetic like jar around you. So you protect this like it's almost like a I suppose it's like if you're in a white bubble or something and it's protecting your energy. So for example, you know, if you're going into a crowded place and there might be people there with really negative energy, or if you knew you were seeing somebody who had particularly negative energy, you put yourself in your bell jar and protect yourself. Yeah. Um, and then we did, we did this um, visualization there. It was called the house on the right bank. And you basically had this house in your mind. And when you went into your house, there was like a shower room where like you could clap well in mine you could clap and like the shower would come on it would be like this white light that would clean you and you could see the negative energy going down the drain and there was a room where you could it was called the editing suite where there was like movie screens and you could you could watch a movie of what you wanted to create mm-hmm. and do at such a young age realizing that I could I could visualize, I could create things. And my dad would always say to me, Carrie, decide what you want and write it down all the time. And so as a teenager, I remember making my first ever goal folder, which I've, it's around it somewhere. And um, I put it like it was a school still. So I took my grade cards and would m- remove where it had, I had terrible grades and changed them all to A's. And um, I got a bank statement that I had and I ch- added loads of zeros to the end. So it said something like 136 million or something mm-hmm. um, in my bank account. And um, I put a bottle of perfume in there because it was like this folder with like plastic sleeves, like wallets. And I put a bottle of perfume in there of how I wanted my life to smell when I was successful. And it was this feeling of just complete abundance and happiness and just possibilities. And um, yeah, and there's other stuff in there, like the car I wanted to drive and yachts and crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, and it was just fun. And I so I did that and um, I used my little techniques that I'd learned from that course when I was a kid in, in um when I was in exams, for example, there was another room where you, it was called the library and you could go in and you could ask a question. So you could see who you could get someone to appear in front of you and you could ask them a question. So I remember being in a history exam at school and not remembering an answer to a question. So going in my mind to my house on the right bank and going into the library and asking my history teacher for what the answer was to this question. And then the answer just coming to me and writing it down. And just, so I was kind of used to using this. And the other thing he would teach us about, and he bought us all books on, and my dad did, was cosmic ordering, which was this Mm -hmm. concept of just you ask, you ask the universe for what you want. You just place a cosmic order. So we used to do this mostly with like, and still do to this day. In fact, probably the word cosmic order in this house comes up multiple times a week. And all <laughs> of my that. friends message me, like, well, I've got a friend at the moment who's pregnant and she really wants the baby to arrive soon. And so she messaged me, can you cosmic order for this baby to arrive, please? Oh, that's I, I'll, awesome. I'll place the cosmic did order. Did you do it? Me. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> that's um, awesome. But, um, and then, yes, we would do it with car parking spaces. So if you're going into a city center and you knew that parking was going to be awful, you basically visualize why you wanted the space and cosmic order for the space. And I swear every time a car would exit, as soon as you arrived and you could just park right where you wanted. You told me that. So when we were filming in LA or Santa Monica or wherever it was, I remember you were like, we were driving around and there was no parking anywhere. And it's like a nightmare. There's parking so bad. and you're like, so I cosmic order it. And I was like, what is cosmic ordering? And you're like, we did this and you and Kalina did it. And you're like, I swear we went around the corner. And as soon as we did that, a car was leaving. We just went right into our spot. And it, <laughs> you're like, it worked. And you're like, and you, I remember you telling me back then, you're like, yeah, it works every time that we do it it's pretty much. So good. Um, and like, he, I remember there's, um, you know, Esther and Jerry Hicks, they have this whole thing with Abraham Hicks and he bought us all this CD set for Christmas one year. My dad did of called ask and it is given. And he, so he was constantly buying his books, buying his CDs. I mean, he still does to this day to be fair. Um, and so I feel like I had this massive grounding in all these tools, but I suppose when I got into my twenties and it was at university and whatever else, I definitely forgot about a lot of it and life got, you know, got going and, and I definitely felt, I got to a point where I totally had become disconnected from all of that stuff. Right. So then bef- just as I started FEA, well, FEA kind of got jump started because I set up this challenge for myself because I felt like in such a low point in my life, I was so lost and confused. And I was like, what is my purpose? I don't know. And um, 
I did this success challenge for myself to see what would be possible if I conditioned myself for success and then got back into it all. So throughout building FEA, definitely gone back on this personal development journey and using all these tools, visualization and all these amazing things to help me to create success. And ultimately that, I mean, before I started FEA, I was in such a frustrated place. I felt like, you know, when you you have these feelings bubbling up inside of you and you know you want to have the most amazing life you know you're meant to do great things but Mm -hmm. you feel like it's on the other side of like almost like a glass wall and you can't break through and I was going insane for like three years going in circles trying to figure it all out and feeling so stuck and my mantra back then was I don't know I don't know I don't know and I was just so stuck there um and to go from that to doing success challenge to starting to change my thoughts and my beliefs and how I was showing up and my energy and my intentions and basically putting a stake in the ground and saying, like, I am here to play big and to live my best life and I am going to do it. And when I made that commitment, uh, that decision to myself, it was like everything moved and the pathway unfolded and I then started FEA. I, you know, wrote my book. All these amazing things have transpired since I had the guts to basically say, I am here and I am ready for this and I am showing up and I am going to open myself up to the possibilities and just see where this takes me and, and keep my thoughts in a really good place and align myself with abundance and success instead of, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And that decision like changed my life. So and all stemmed back from basically your dad kind of introducing yeah. you guys to all this stuff. So I have a couple questions. Um I think the first the first one is like I know so people are gonna hear this episode and if they're not on like uh you know into the spirituality and a lot of the woo they they might be going okay Carrie well if all of this stuff works so well how come you didn't use it during that plateau we talked about in earlier of the episode? I have, I have kind of like my philosophy or, or explanation of that, but I would love to hear yours. It, you know, like if you're stuck in a plateau, why not just tap back into that stuff? Um, and, and why can it work faster in those types of scenarios? Does that make sense? Does the question make sense? Yeah, it okay. does make sense. And I think for me, it was because I had like, I must have had so many fears and doubts and worries as I reached that next level that were below the surface that I really wasn't potentially consciously aware of. And I started tripping myself up. And it's like with anything you start, it's like you go down a rabbit hole and you start with a a doubt and then it spirals. And and if you don't catch yourself, it keeps spiraling. And I just think it's, it's so easy to fall off. I mean, I fall off the bandwagon with this stuff all the time. I have to be so intentional to get back to it and to stay on track with it. And like, even over the past like few months of like getting back into it all properly, there've been so many days where I've just been, it's not been amazing. And I've like really had to figure out and go back to basics with it all. So it is a lot, you have to put in a lot of effort, and that's maybe the wrong word. You just have to be really intentional about it. And it's so easy to get caught up in the minutia of day-to-day life and for things to throw you off track. And it, I don't think it takes much to, to just spiral away from it and to feel, to be so out of alignment. Right. So. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I agree with you. Like my, my take on it is, is, is we always need the struggles and there's always going to be ups to the downs. There's always going to be black and the white. They give contrast to each other. So it's, it's not like, you know, like I obviously focus a lot on frequency, energy, holding myself in the right place, setting the intentions, all the stuff that you talked about. But at the same time, anytime there's like a roadblock or a struggle, I don't look at it as a negative thing. Like people, like most people will, I look at it as, okay, great. I, let's just say I want to get to a hundred million dollars. I'm going to manifest. I'm going to put the intentions out there. I'm going to do all of that stuff. I might need this. Like I can think about it and visualize it and do everything. But if I'm not matching the frequency of what that $1 million looks like, then it's not, it's, it's not going to happen. So we have to elevate ourselves and our frequency as well. But sometimes we need the struggles of that are going to bring growth, that the growth will now allow us to start matching 
the frequency of hitting what we want to do. So people look at like the, the struggles or the plateaus or the downs as like, oh, that's a down. It's not working. It's like, no, it could be at like, again, the dip factor it could be bringing you down so that you can elevate back up to that higher thing. The struggles yeah. always have to exist. And like my, I don't know about you, but my, as an, as, a, as an entrepreneur, I kind of like the struggles. Like I've learned to really love the journey because I know there's some kind of like learning lesson, knowing that I'm going to be gaining from that, that is going to be my advantage when it comes to like growing the business. And I think yeah. so many people just don't understand that. I do think, I mean, as entrepreneurs, I feel like we exist in with so much uncertainty and it's this crazy roller coaster ride. And I always think of it like, you have to just buckle yourself in and be willing to go on the adventure and see it as an adventure with all the ups and downs. And exactly what you said, out of the struggle comes so much growth, comes so much transformation. And it's like with the struggle that I've been going through, I know it will lead to the next book. Like yeah. without that struggle, I don't know if I would have got to the next book. And the, the struggle leads- could be the book. Yeah, you exactly. Know? So so yeah, you're right. Like so much comes out of those times and, um, and yeah, just the amount of growth that comes like, cause if everything was plain sailing all the time, it's just vanilla, it'd become your normal. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so you have a son and, um, hopefully it's okay to say you have number two on the way. And yeah. if, it, if it's not, then we'll just release this podcast when it is, <laughs> um, I'm really curious is like, because it sounds like your dad was a big influence in your life and kind of like helping with your mindset and giving you this really unique way of looking at life that I just, and I know you see it as a gift, but a lot of people just don't have that opportunity. And actually, to be honest, a lot of kids aren't even open up to this possible. Like my mom did a lot of this type of stuff, but I was so like, oh, it's BS mom. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. And now I'm doing everything she did <laughs> when I was a kid <laughs> and probably more like, I, uh, like we can go way down the rabbit hole, but, um, I'm curious as to how you plan to raise your kids. Do you plan on incorporating all this into their life? Do you plan on raising them to be entrepreneurs? Like, have you thought about that? What's, what's your take on it? I a hundred percent want to, be able to share with them things that I found really helpful. And, um, I spent, I, I, like me and Kellen, we will listen to audio books together on, we found this really good one recently, um, called how to raise successful people. Mm. And it's, oh, I can't remember who the author is now, but she has like three really, really successful daughters. And, um, and that's fascinating. So I love opening up my mind and learning different things. So to help me to be a better teacher for him, but I really want to be intentional about, um, just, uh, I, uh, the values that I hold true for a start. Um, and when he understands it to be able to teach him about like meditation and, power of visualization and positivity and like how to really like like use your mind in a way that's going to help you to create success and to um create really a really good belief system so that is definitely stuff I will 100% be really intentional about um but I'm, I, I at the same time like I I do like listening it or I listen to books rather than reading them really. But, and I like that because it shows me how maybe I can apply my framework and things that have really helped me, but in a way that is not forcing it on him, but just coming across in in the best way so that it's there for him to take it or leave it. And so. And what happens if they leave it? It, If they leave it, how are you, do you plan on just being like, okay, like let them go their own, their own path? I mean, thankfully I was a bit of a wild kid. So like w- <laughs> when I was a teenager, I had black spiky hair. I oh, wore wait. a dog collar. I went to what? a Marilyn Manson concert. No. I was really into like grungy. I need like, pictures. All that grungy I need, stuff. I need proof. You need to send those. I know, out. right? <laughs> I had no idea. How did I not know this about you? Yeah. Like I was really into like, I mean, I was obsessed with like Kurt Cobain and and then it just kind of spiraled from there into a bit more of an extreme thing. Um, so I know that <laughs> to, you can 
that, I mean, I feel bad because there's nothing wrong with that stuff. I mean, I loved it. And I, yeah, to be yeah. fair, I still actually really like a lot of my music. Um, but um, you can, I was, in some ways went through some kind of strange things. Right. <laughs> and I think everyone's on this journey and everyone has to express themselves in their own way. And my parents probably were like, what is going on with Carrie? Like this is the <laughs> what has happened to her. Yeah. But for some reason, they just trusted me to do it and to get through it. And I look at them sometimes and I look at the level of freedom they gave me to express myself within reason. I mean, if I'd got a tattoo or anything like that, my mum would have thrown me out of the house. <laughs> But like they allowed, they gave me so much freedom to express who I was. And I think that's what it's about when you're a parent. And what I think about is that I have to have the same approach with, with my children, with, with Casey. I need to give him the freedom to explore who he is and to be himself. And yes, I would like him to maybe share my views on certain things, but let's be honest, he's not going to share my views on everything. Like the same way you didn't share your views with your mum until you were much older. Right. Um, and so I think it's like, like taking a step back and just trusting that things will work out and that they will become who they need to be in yeah. the perfect way. And that well, everything they go through is just it, what they need to go through. It's pretty awesome. Like to hear you say that, because it's like, I look at how your parents raised you and they kind of gave you that freedom. They obviously like here they shared what they viewed as helpful and success and kind of your dad like shared all that with you, but kind of like you said, let you guys explore who you were and not only explore, but express who you were. And I think a lot of parents tend to like trap their kids and this is uh, who we are. This is what our family is. This is what we believe. And they don't allow that, that level of like exploration or so even supporting you know, who your, your kids truly are. And what's really cool is that I like, I see what you've built with the female entrepreneur association. And when it grew a lot, you talk about how it was everything you wanted to be. Like, it was literally an expression of yourself. And I, I like, I, I believe to my core that if your parents didn't raise you that way, FAA might not even, FEA may not even exist because it really was you expressing yourself when you're building this thing out. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's like the, one of the biggest traits for kid with, with kids is like, and you said something about, um, you're reading the book on how to like raise successful kids. I'm curious on your take of success. But for me, when I look at like, I had someone asked me the other day, was like, what do you want your kids to be when they grow up? And I'm just like, happy. I, yeah, like, I exactly. just, I just want them to be who they are and, and express who they are and do what they do. Um, but I am curious, what is your take on success and like, have, how do you plan on, I guess, raising a quote unquote successful kid? Like, how would you know when you've done that? Uh, I mean, I, I grew, totally agree with you. I definitely think on the bottom line is happiness, Yeah, but let's be honest, we're not all happy 24 seven, you no. know? that doesn't exist. That's not what it's about. I think for me, my definition of success is being willing to open myself up to, well, being, having the courage to, um, see what's possible and to explore the possibilities. Like for such a long time, I was trying to search for my purpose in life. And then I realized my purpose in life is to see how amazing I can make my life and to see what the possibilities are and what I could create and what feels good for me. And I think if they got to that place where they were just ready to be adventurers in the sense of exploring the opportunities, exploring the possibilities and opening themselves up to live their best lives, then that would be amazing. Like, I think that's, that's where happiness I think really comes from anyway. It's, like, I think it's, it's being fulfilled in the work that you do every day, you know, yeah. like, and, and I, people are just like, Oh, I don't, I don't want a job. I don't want to have to work. And to me, that's just like, you haven't found something that you actually enjoy doing. Because for me, it doesn't matter what happens. Like I love building businesses. I love putting out content. I love inspiring. And so like, if I didn't have this that I'm doing right now, I would be, be I would be bored out of my mind. And that was, yeah. that's not a level of happiness. And so I, I, for me, I, and I think you and I are kind of in alignment on that is just like, just waking up happy to do what you do every single day is kind of like the end goal, you know? Yeah, definitely. So Okay. Uh, I kind of want to go back. Cause this is just, again, another curiosity question. Um, 
You talked about how you were in history class and you tapped into the room and you visualized the history teacher giving you the answer. I'm assuming the answer was correct. Yes. Do you, or do you remember? Yeah. It was? Also, like, yeah. Okay. Have you ever done that, used that before, like that tactic? Or, or sorry, again? I mean, I probably have, but not that I can remember as vividly as that. Okay. But I must, I feel like I, you know, sometimes when you like, <laughs> you do that, but or it's like you're tapping into a different energy. Like sometimes I always think like, this is a bit bizarre, but like I always imagine FEA to be an energy and to be a, an entity of its own. Right. Because it is. And sometimes I ask myself and think that I'm in front of FEA and I think, what would she tell me to do? What is she saying? And ask her for the answers. <laughs> or for, some people do it where they're like, what would Br Richard Branson do? What would Richard Branson say? And like tuning into that energy of that other person to kind of bring through an answer. So I suppose now I would use it more in that in that way. Have you done, have you, uh, uh, did I hear you correctly in saying that you have done that or you... Or are you saying you want to do that? No, no, I do do that. So with FEA, I, I actually think I wrote about in the book, like just connecting with that energy. Why the hell not? Like if you are stuck and you don't have an answer, why not just try crazy things to see if you can bring something through and you can connect with a different type of energy yeah. to bring through an answer. So yeah, like having conversations with FEA. <laughs> I just don't. I mean, if you're stuck, why not? Yeah. I can, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I do that I don't tell a lot of people because it's just, it sounds crazy when you compare it to like what's normal inside of today's yeah. society. But there, I mean, there are times when I'm like, when we first started uh, the video Forex effect and we were like Caitlin Batcher, for example, is, is who I'm thinking of. We were coming up with her messaging and her method and like, we just couldn't figure out what it was. And so part of my process is literally getting silent and just no music, nothing, no thoughts. And then I just wait for the answer to come into my head. And to be honest with you, there's, there were moments where I felt like I was cheating or taking someone else's work because I wasn't thinking up the things that I would be giving to people or saying in content. Um, and it almost felt like it wasn't mine. It was like a gift that someone or something gave me. And I actually had, to, this was a, an internal battle that I had to deal with right when we started the video 4X was like, even the video 4X, like to this day, I'm like, is this really mine? Because I didn't think this up. I don't know if I created it. It literally was just boom in my head. And it was just almost like someone handed down, plugged it in my head and then like walked away and gave me this thing. And, um, and I think that if more people have tapped into that type of thing. And yes, that might sound crazy to most, but like, if you're stuck, why the hell not? Like, exactly. why not just give it a try? And my, like, and we did that with Caitlin and I did that with a lot of messaging with a lot of clients is like, I didn't think up all this stuff. People go like, how do you think the, how do you think of all this? I'm like, I don't, I, well, I don't know yeah. what the heck it is, but whatever it is just gives me the answers. I totally agree. When I was writing my book, I had to write most of it like that. And I would sit on my sofa with my laptop. And like, I, I would, for me, I just would imagine like this white light coming down from the universe and feeling connected. And I would just wait for um, something to come through. And I would just say, and be intentional of just like, right through me, like, tell me what I need to put onto these pages. And then I remember writing things and being like, I don't know where this came from. Like, I've got my book in front of me now, but like this chapter's in here, like, I think I wrote this about this concept called the university of opportunity or, or something like that. And I was like, where the hell did that come from? Like, I don't yeah. know where it came from. I was like, well, it's going in the book and it's in the book. Yeah. And so many of the ideas in there, it was like what you said, they, it felt like they came through me rather than they were of me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I just go with it. Like I, but I had to write like that. Otherwise my logical brain kicked in yeah. and it screwed everything up. <laughs> Yeah. And I just couldn't write the book in the way I wanted to write it when I, when that was happening. And so I had to do all I could. I think when you're in a creative role, you have to tune in. And I think most entrepreneurs really are. We're creatives. We're ideas people. Um, and we have to get into that place to come up with our best stuff Yeah, and whatever gets you there. Yeah. A hundred percent. Carrie, I love these types of chats so much. For those of you guys who don't know, like when we, when Carrie and I would work together, we would spend like two or, day, two or three days filming. And then we would have a plan of what we were supposed to film. And then we would just chat for an hour like this on all of this stuff. Sometimes even going more woo woo. And they're like, 
yeah, I guess we'd have to film a video. <laughs> that we like, yeah. we would film a video just so we can continue, yeah. continue going. <laughs> it's like, all right, let's just get this thing out of the way. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoy this. We've already gone close to an hour, but I wanted to ask one last question, which is what is the future of FEA? Because I know you've just kind of are at the beginning stages of breaking through plateau. I'm very curious of like what your vision is now and, and where you plan on, on taking it. I am really excited and kind of scared at the same time about um, stuff because I feel like it's pushing me to my edge again of like getting out of my comfort zone. Um, But just we're working on an app, which I'm really, really excited about. We're just um, working on different programs within FEA, um, which is definitely pushing me outside of my comfort zone. Um, They're writing the next book and also just kind of getting it and doing it in a way that just, again, feels so much better and feels so good. and. It'll be interesting when baby number two arrives in a few months. Like, I think it might feel, I'm thinking it might be really different this time just because I feel energetically like I'm in such a different place. Um, so I'm just excited to explore and just see where it goes and where it all leads really. And just, you have fun with it really. Yeah. I feel I'm excited that it's back to feeling fun again. Yeah. I, That's cool. I, I love that. Carrie, thank you so much for uh, coming in here and giving us an hour of your time. I appreciate it. Uh, so grateful for you and our friendship. And uh, again, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Of course. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this episode uh, and you want more episodes like this, let us know. Join our new generation entrepreneur Facebook group. Let us know your biggest takeaway from this episode. And if you enjoyed this episode, we would be so thankful, grateful, and appreciate any reviews you want to leave us on iTunes. So head over to iTunes and go ahead, do that now. And we'll see you next week for another episode of this podcast. Take care. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, go below, hit the subscribe button, and make sure you click on that bell icon and get notified every time we drop a new episode. Now, if you're looking for the show notes, we have them linked underneath this video, as well as our social media handles and some links to free training and offers that we drop from time to time to help you guys even further. So go check those out if you're interested. And thank you so much for tuning in to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast.